Wars and Hypocrisy There are wars in the world, and wars form, and in all wars, both sides are always to blame. It seems strange to say that it's both sides' fault, but there's a saying, when one doesn't want it, two don't fight. Normally, in history we have the issue of the cornered mouse. What would that be? It would be the idea of someone cornering a mouse, and this cornered mouse attacks. Pacifist concepts like that of Mahatma Gandhi are solutions for the absurd reduction of deaths. Because in a confrontation, the victims are always greater, and normally the strongest is usually the most without reason, but as the story is told by the victors, then the story is biased towards whoever wins. One example is the destruction of the indigenous population of the Americas in which there is a justification that ignores the malignancy of the suffering and death of populations that were decimated. Another example is the dropping of nuclear bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, in which there were deaths of pregnant women, children, elderly people, hospitalized people. But as such an action was produced by the victors, the malignancy of the action is reduced. The point is always that no matter how much you want, the weakest will always receive the condemnation, as they will be part of the losing party. And this is the clear factor in the hypocrisy of war. And every war exists even before what is called war. Because the so-called Cold War is a war, as violent as the war that claims to be active. So, if I take away food from a people, or approach a region with weapons, that is the action of cornering the rat. There is a fundamental maximum principle of all things about good and evil. For the good refers, for example, to pacification actions in the style of Mahatma Gandhi, or for example Jesus Christ, but always in these cases the good suffers, but minimizes the deaths, but always lowers itself, always placing itself as a servant of the person causing the suffering. And this can be considered something unacceptable for the enforcers of justice. Notably, real justice can only come from truly fair groups, something that if examined carefully does not exist. Thus, if there is not a universal judgment system somewhere in the universe, no matter how one thinks or how one acts, there will be no real justice. It will never really be applied, and in the end the most unjust will always end up dominating, as justice will be biased towards the side of those who legislate and not towards the side of the other. And this is the hypocritical foundation of wars.